All right, everybody, it's time for Cezanne number four. Uh, you might be noticing in the list there won't be a Cezanne number three. I had a, uh, had a bottle that gushed, and it uh, didn't work out, so I'm going to try to open another bottle of that later. But for right now, we'll go ahead and get this other one out of the way. As I said before, don't know what yeast strain this is. Not really going to share what I made with it. It's a Cezanne, five different, five different strains put into different separations of the same batch. So let's give this a shot and see how we're doing. So far, I've liked number two the best. Number one was okay, but number two was far superior. Get a little water out on the table there. Okay, so immediately this one pours decently hazy, slight one finger head, less head than anything else, more um, more bubbly and soapy, kind of creamy, really slight head, not very impressive there, more like a straw yellow than a straw gold. Okay, so immediately I'm getting a lot of funk from this one. Um, Definitely a lot of funk, some peppery notes. Um, it's still fairly clear, but it's a it's a hazy yellow, definitely. It's not really showing up in the video very well. It's a hazy yellow. Yeah, really, it's it's funky. That's uh that's interesting. That's one note I haven't really gotten from any of the other ones. Is funk. So we'll see. And the head is quickly receding here. Um, not even having a whole lot of luck making making it grow. It's 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 real thin, which I'm not real pleased with, but I'm intrigued. So let's see. Definitely has that funky quality. I'm fascinated to see which one this is because this is not what I really picked for any of them. Although I'm kind of like I said, you know, it's it's interesting. It's not bad. Um, but the differences are, are very much night and day here. Um, so let's see here. Get a definite bready quality, some subtle touches of apple cider vinegar. I could see blending whatever strain this is with a uh, with another one in part. Um, I'm fascinated by this, and and one thing I you know I note here part of what was really the essential learning learning experience from this was to see how much the yeast strain really mattered um, within a given style, and um, I think this tells me that it, it actually matters a, a whole lot. Um, so it's zippy, it's tart, it really is just kind of straddling the line between a wild ale. And a saison. Um, this is different. I, honestly, I did not expect any of them to taste like this. Um, so this is this is this is cool. Um, just like I said, to see these differences. So I'm getting that biscuit biscuity quality. Like I said, some apple cider vinegar. Very tart. Um, but I've always found that, that that particular tartness is kind of distracting, really. And um, that's why I like it to be there in moderation. I'm getting peppery notes. And a definite, like I said, a, a definite amount of funk. Um, the cleaning bitterness is there, but that sourness, subtle sourness, not overt, kind of just runs the day here. Um, and uh, this is, it's actually, it's very good, just not what I was going for. Um, like, honestly, the last two, two and this will be four, I could package, I feel like I could package and sell as separate beers, and you, you wouldn't know that they were made more or less the same way. There is some subtle spicy herbal character. I feel like if I did do this and I wanted to get kind of to where it was, I'd have to put a lot more sads in it. Um... But yeah, this is cool. Um, like I said, it's not blowing my mind, but I like where it's going. I really do, and I think that there's there's definitely something here. As with all these, I'm getting some really pretty lacing on these glasses. Um,
definite subtle undercurrent of funk there. I, like I said, you can really see pairing this this use with another one of the strains. And just kind of letting letting them work together. Uh, I said not my favorite, but um, let me let me see if I can pick out the grains here. You definitely get that biscuit, but then you know the like a subtle touch of 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 the um, of that weedy character that's in all these other ones. It's not not overly flowery, but like I said, that really zesty funk just kind of eats away at the malt body, like in such a way that makes it kind of hard to, to pick out and distinguish. Um, but it's very refreshing. It's very nice. Very tasty. Um, got to, to work on my carbonating of these beers. They're they've been a little undercarbonated. Um. But yeah, this is this has been really good. Uh, Saison number four is interesting. It's much it's much more farmhouse ale than Saison. This is not exactly what I was going for, but um, it's definitely an education. So very good in its own way. This this won't survive the this won't survive as a total strain for the yeast uh, for the yeast test, just because like I said, it's not my angle. But it, I might could use it in the future in part with another strain. So. Those are my thoughts on number four. It's uh, it's really interesting. Like I said, it's um really does matter. I want to see which one it is though. Huh? Okay. Not totally surprised by that, just because I didn't think it would be the other one. But um, but yeah. So if you're if you're brewing, keep brewing. If you're drinking, keep drinking. And cheers.